Firefighting is, by its nature, a dangerous job. With a career of volunteer, when a person joins the fire service, they know they face the risk of injury or death. Every year, too many firefighters are lost in a line of duty or suffer debilitating work-related injuries or illness. While we may not yet be able to completely erase the inherent risks of firefighting, there are actions we can take today to reduce those risks. I am State Fire Administrator James Cable. I've had the privilege of serving as a member of the Office of Fire Prevention and Control since 1997 and now have the responsibility to lead that office as we support the fire service and protect the citizens of the state of New York. I also served as an active volunteer firefighter for over 30 years. Firefighting is dangerous and there will inevitably be times when a life is lost in the effort to save another. However, there are firefighter deaths that go largely unnoticed but have every bit as profound an impact on families, fire departments, and communities. Each year, many firefighters die from cancer caused by exposure to the vast array of toxic chemicals present in the environment in which they perform their firefighting duties. My name is Malin Irish. Um, I'm currently chief here in Homer. Uh, I've been in the fire service here as a volunteer for 40, going into the 46th year. Uh, I've been a state fire instructor since 1984. Um, here in Homer, I've been president, chief, I've held all the line officer positions. A lot of things over the course of that 40 some years that I probably was exposed to that I had no idea was being exposed to at the time. I was diagnosed with prostate cancer April 4th, 2014. It's been five years and I'm currently in remission. The treatment that's gotten me there has been continuous uh, from day of diagnosis till now. Cancer treatments right now are a little over $21,000 a month. To date, the cost of my treatment has been just over a million dollars. There are other firefighters across this country every day dying of some form of occupational cancer. We need to change the culture in the fire service. Dirty gear is no longer a badge of honor. Gross decon at the seam takes 85% of the carcinogenic materials off from our turnout gear SCVA. The cost of the cancer treatment versus any kind of decon, both in terms of time and money, the decon process is far, far cheaper um, and better for the individual. Um, I, there's no other way I can put it. For new firefighters coming in, you need to do is do everything that you can to prevent getting the cancer. The, the firefighters need to wear all of their PPE, including the SCBA, with the face piece through the entire fire uh, life cycle. They can't take it off while they're inside. It's got to be on. All the equipment is provided, everything. You don't have to do anything. Take your gear home in a bag, get it washed, go home and shower. Turnout gear shouldn't go into any living quarters. Shouldn't go into our personal vehicles. Um, uh, you know, it shouldn't go home. Shouldn't go into living spaces at the fire station. Uh, it should be in separate areas uh, where off-gassing and uh, cross-contamination can occur. I could do many, many, many five-minute decons compared to probably what I've lost in, in usable lifetime. Instructors, because of their time in training fires, uh, have even a greater exposure to these carcinogenic materials than the students based on the amount of time that they're in a training fire. I would gladly trade places with anybody who is cancer free as opposed to being where I'm at today. It's too late for me. It's not too late for anybody else. Hi, I'm Denise Smith. I'm a professor of health and human physiological sciences at Skidmore College, where I direct the First Responder Health and Safety Laboratory. Aimed at understanding the risks that firefighters face, technologies that can reduce those risks, policies and procedures that can help keep them safer and healthier on the job. I also work at the Illinois Fire Service Institute, where I'm a research scientist trying to understand the physiological strain associated with firefighting and also how that's related to the risk of carcinogenic exposure on the fire ground. Because although we often think of these as two distinct entities, the truth is many of the occupational exposures that firefighters encounter
can increase the risk for cardiovascular disease and the development of cancer. So I'm working in collaboration with Underwriters Lab and NIOSH at the Illinois Fire Service Institute to take a comprehensive view of firefighter health and safety. Research in the fire service has progressed enormously in the past decade, due largely to the funding through the Assistance to Firefighters Grant and the willingness of the fire service to partner with researchers who are dedicated to making the fire service safer, healthier, and more effective. Firefighters are exposed to multiple potential carcinogens on the fire ground. We historically just thought about smoke and soot. Now we understand far more fully that the smoke contains polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons, the PAHs. The gear can become contaminated and even later there's off-gassing of the volatile organic compounds or VOCs. In addition to that, there's flame retardants that we're concerned with, particulate matter in the fire, and dozens and dozens of other dangerous chemicals. The main point is that we must protect ourselves and our firefighters as best as possible, and that is done primarily by wearing your protective equipment properly and ensuring that you're cleaning it properly so there's not unnecessary contamination after the event. One of the things we now understand is how important it is to be protecting the airway during overhaul. We used to just think it was necessary to wear SCBA during fire suppression activities, but now through the research that's been done, we understand that dangerous chemicals persist in the air even after it looks like the room has been ventilated and is cleared. It's absolutely critical to be protecting from carcinogenic exposures during overhaul. And I would go on and say, there's also exposures on the outside of the building that have been underappreciated. So when there's smoke on the fire ground, the firefighter is being exposed to that. It's not just on the interior of the building where we need to think about respiratory protection. Occupational cancer is a threat to firefighters. Fortunately, the fire service is taking it very seriously. And there's several steps you can take to decrease your risk of occupationally related cancer. Clean your gear. Clean yourself. Don't keep contaminated gear near you. And don't eat with contaminated hands. You also want to decrease your exposure to diesel and smoke and particulate at any time you can. Doing these things will decrease the risk that's associated with your occupation. You can decrease your risk of cancer by approximately 15% by following some of these best practices. And the good news is you can decrease your risk further by embracing the wellness and fitness programs in the fire service because being healthy overall is protective against cancer. In fact, physical fitness alone can decrease your risk by approximately 30%. Healthy eating can decrease your risk by another 15%. So by all means, protect your health. Make sure you're healthy and safe enough to do the job you love and that you're committed to doing. Changing the culture in the fire service is difficult, but it certainly isn't impossible. And we see leaders around us all the time who are embracing change, particularly around decreasing cancer risk for themselves, for their families, and also for the firefighters they serve alongside because firefighters are all in this together. And when the entire crew adopts health and safety procedures, when they adopt policies and procedures to decrease their risk, the fire service is safer and better. And the fire service, like no other organization I know, is proud to help each other. In the next few minutes, you'll learn a few quick, simple steps that can greatly reduce the likelihood that you will be one of those firefighter cancer death statistics. This simple safety program has been implemented in the state fire training program as a requirement after all live fire training evolutions. OFPC members are conducting firefighter cancer reduction and cancer prevention programs statewide, including the distribution of decontamination kits, with the goal of providing one kit to every fire station in the state. I ask you to pay close attention to the following video. I ask you to make the decontamination process demonstrated in the video a routine practice after every fire or live fire training event. 
I ask you to do these things to protect yourself, your fellow firefighters, and for those you love and who love you. Don't put your kids, your spouse, your parents, your fire department family, or your community through the agony of a firefighter death that could have been prevented. My name is Tim Graves. I'm a fire protection specialist, and I am the lead for the cancer prevention program. This firefighter is in between evolutions, not complete working in the IDLH atmosphere for the day. This firefighter is removing his hood over his SCBA face piece and pulling the SCBA face piece directly off of his head. This is the preferred method for hood and SCBA face piece removal. These firefighters are using the post fire wipes in between an evolution. They are not complete working in the IDLH atmosphere for the day. These firefighters are using the wipes on their hands, their face, and their necks, and anywhere else they think they may have been contaminated. These firefighters have left the IDLH atmosphere, the hot zone. They will no longer be firefighting today. They are going through the gross decon at this time. The firefighters will check, see who is lowest on air, and that person will be washed first. It is preferred that the firefighters stay on air through the process of the gross decon. This will help protect them from inhaling any gases or contamination that may be on their gear. The firefighters are rinsed down with a garden hose, low pressure from the neck down, including the boots and the gloves. This will remove the gross contamination on their gear. Then the firefighter will be sprayed down with the soap and water solution all across their body. And then they will be scrubbed with a soft bristle brush from the neck down. As you scrub the firefighter, you will see the white soap bubbles forming. Remember to wash the hands, the gloves, and the boots. Once the firefighter is scrubbed, they will be rinsed down with the low pressure garden hose from the neck down. Use caution around the interfaces of the turnout gear as to not squirt water down the firefighter's neck. Each state decon kit contains a 15 foot garden hose, a garden hose nozzle, and an adapter for an inch and three quarter to garden hose fitting. The kit also includes a squirt bottle and two brushes, a large yellow car wash type brush and a smaller blue wheel type brush. Either brush may be used for this firefighter decon. It's entirely your preference. Once the gross decon is complete, the firefighters will package their equipment for transport. The state has supplied construction grade clear garbage bags for turnout gear and SCBAs to be placed in. Gear can also be placed into gear bags to help contain any residual contamination that may be on the gear before going through a complete wash. Gear bags, turnout gear, and equipment should never be stored in the passenger compartment of vehicles. Once complete with stowing your gear, Use the wipes to remove any contamination left on your skin. This does not eliminate the need for taking a shower as soon as possible. Take a shower, put on clean clothes. That's all it takes. It's that simple. We have a job to do that is at times dangerous. But just as we train to operate safely and effectively on the fire ground, we must each be accountable, take personal responsibility to reduce the risk of cancer, and make our fire service career as safe as possible. The few minutes described here may buy you years of life full of family and service and doing what you love. Thank you for the service you provide. Be safe.